Hey friends, Andy Jenkins with the Warrior Hope Podcast. We are in episode number, I had to look at my notes here to find it, <laughs> number 13 of season three. Now, in this series, uh, this season, we've really been talking about behind the mission and beyond the mission. So we've been really taking you kind of behind the curtain of what's going on at Crosswinds Foundation for Faith and Culture, how we got into doing some of the documentaries, how we got into doing some of the resources such as Dense and Tangled, other resources such as Warrior Hope. And uh, today I want to really talk about the Warrior family. We're going to start getting into for... I think this week and the next one, uh, really, some of the material related to the newest documentary, Trauma Comes Home. In fact, next week, I'm going to share with you some extended clips that actually made it into that documentary, Trauma Comes Home. Uh, today, I want to talk about the idea that the ripple effect that it has on the family when one person uh, does uh, not not just is deployed into combat, but they, they, they serve in any capacity in the military. Uh, I want to start it off like this because everything isn't uh, doom and gloom. Everything is not harsh. Uh, sometimes it's just the everyday stuff. I, I want to roll into this. Here's an interesting story that happened. Jeremiah, uh, we featured him a few times. Now, when he was serving over... Uh, can't really give his location uh, for security reasons. Uh, but when he was serving in, in the Middle East, that area, uh, can't drill it down more than that. Uh, an interesting thing happened. Let me let him roll into this. This is footage that was from a Songs of Hope event. This is Jeremiah Davis, a, a Marine. I was about uh, 20 miles from the Pakistani border in southern Afghanistan. Uh, I was with a group of other Marines. There was about 21 of us total out there. We were as far out as out could get for Afghanistan goes. Um, no support, no backup. Um, one day, late afternoon, we got news um, that roughly 27 miles east of us, Osama bin Laden had been killed. Um, of course, our little small group of, of Marines on our on our on our cop, a little controlled outpost. You know, of course, we were all excited. You know, um, get get the story there. Uh, Twenty miles away, Osama bin Laden is is captured, killed. Uh, to to be clear, okay, so twenty miles away that happens, and and now notice. What occurs next? We had one sat phone uh, to share between the couple dozen of us to call home and talk to families and the battery didn't last long so it was several days before all of us could get through on a, on a sat phone. And I had, uh, when it was my turn, I called my, at the time, girlfriend who's now my wife and the mother of our son. Um, and she was ecstatic. And because the night before I got to call, they came on the news that they had killed Osama bin Laden last night. See, see, so you, you got it. Uh, finally, gets a sat phone. <laughs> They're sharing the sat phone, so he can't call for a while. Um, days later, he calls his wife, is a girlfriend at the time. Now it's his wife, and she seems to think this just happened. And I was kind of taken back a little bit, and I said. Lizzie, that didn't happen last night. That was that was about a week ago. That's old news. Um, and to this day, that's one of her favorite stories of me being overseas is um, her recollection and mine of when they killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, you can trust everything you read on the internet, you hear on uh, you know both extreme CNN and Fox. Like they're they're both completely accurate, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so here it is. You know, you know, this may be just an incidental thing, you know, a, a, not a big deal, but sometimes it is. Um, let me introduce you to, again, Eugene Cuevas. He was the director for Invisible Scars for Honoring the Code, uh, did a lot of the setup for uh, When Trauma Comes Home, that documentary, the most recent documentary. And here he is talking on film 
really kind of setting up the sequence of what's going to be eventually uh, what well, now is the documentary. This is when it was all kind of in process. Trauma comes home. Here's Eugene Cuevas talking about what happens with the family. You may be familiar with our previous documentaries and our ongoing Warrior Hope program. But in this new chapter, we begin to discuss the warrior family. See, when a veteran deploys, we know that they face innumerable challenges, both on the battlefield and many times when they come home but so do their families while their veteran is away and many times when they come home. Now I want to bring in another voice here. This is Bruce Chaplin. He is a pastoral psychologist. Uh, we brought him up, oh goodness, back episodes ago. Let's see if I can find Bruce. It was the episode War Changes People. That was episode three of this season, looking through the notes there. N notice what he says about families as it relates to military service. Let's just focus on one branch of, school, of the military. Let's just focus on the guard. Let's look at the army guard in particular, okay? Army guard people are members of the community, citizen soldiers. They work at the banks, they work at the schools, they work in the stores, they sell insurance, they're mechanics, you name it, they're there. They get called up to go overseas to participate, to fight, to get a, a deployment, let's say they go for 12 months. Now back home, things are still going on. So things are still happening. The family is still there. It's still there going to school. Mama's still there. Maybe she's now got a job because she needs to help out because of the incident. And things go by and a year goes by and the guy comes home and he's home for six months and then he's gone on another deployment. This is a lot of stress on the family. And the kids are now feeling that stress. And now I want to shift gears a little bit. This is all going to be related. We're going to tie it together. Generally, at Songs of Hope, we feature a veteran sharing their story and then a songwriter. Now, here we had three children. These are all from the same family. They are sharing their story with a songwriter. Alexis Wilkins is writing their story. I want to kind of bring you in. Here's some of the footage there. I see, like, people talking about how their dads are just annoying and they won't leave them alone and stuff. I'm like, well, I mean, you have one. I mean, I would love to have one, you know. It'd be great, but... I'm upset and stuff that he's not here. And I just, um, it's just hard, really, just to, I mean, everything is, but sometimes I just get mad. I shouldn't, I just get mad. The hardest, the hardest part, well, I guess, would just be losing someone that you love. It's, it's super hard. It's something that you sometimes can't get over. And really, because you left my mom with this much stuff, and she tells me I look just like him and stuff, and so it's hard just to be like, you know, all I have is pictures. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of odd to some of us because we tend to say things like, well, kids are resilient. Uh, well, the reality is kids have to be resilient. They don't generally know how to do things like run away from home. Uh, they can't just get a job, move out, and go to another city. They can't just move in with a friend or go couch surf. Uh, they, they generally don't do some of the bigger uh, things that adults do where we overdose or we uh, end our lives. They, they generally don't do that. They just kind of have to go with the flow because they have to. Uh, but uh, as Chaplin brings out here, and again, he is a pastoral psychologist, that they do carry the trauma and then do start exhibiting some of the trauma. In fact, um, this was a bonus, uh, this comes from a bonus part of the DVD, um, Invisible Scars, children as emotional carriers. And notice what he says. Children are the carriers of a lot of the emotional stress that families are dealing with. They don't have the skills that adults have. They're young, they're developing, their minds aren't totally formed, but they are experiencing a lot of issues. Plus they're experiencing what's going on in the community around them. And the kids acting out in school. And the school, what do they do? A child comes to school, he's acting out, he's bullying, he's fighting, he's arguing, he's disruptive. Well, we can't have him in school. So what do we do with him? Send him to the principal. Principal sends them to the school counselor. School counselor says, oh, this child's got some sort of a, 
a defiant disorder. He's got some sort of an oppositional defiant disorder, which is a diagnostic code. We're going to have to treat him that way. We're going to put him into a, we're going to label him as whatever he is. Now, now let me be clear as we pull the story together, um, we reference some here that these children's dad is not there. Uh, he's, he's not deployed right now. He actually did succumb to suicide. Um, so as I roll back into them, I kind of want you to start watching or listening, depending on how you're consuming this content, with that in mind. I just want to give my mom that song. Don't she you worry. She, she, she doesn't get the whole second verse. Okay. That is, that is her verse. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah, we have, we have to give that second verse to mom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You just lost, you just lost, like, you know, love your life, and then you have three kids, and you care by yourself. You just, like, deal with that, and also, mm -hmm. it had to be strong for y'all. Yeah. She hit all the bad. Showed us all the good we had, like all the, yes. like, shake, yes. okay. Give me a high five, give me a high five. Thank you. <laughs> sometimes I'm in my head replaying what you said, or sometimes I'm in my, my head. My mom will know what it means by replaying all the things that he said, because it's a tape. I will it's my true. Mom. Held our hands when it got hard, and I know it was too much, but you taught us to be tough, and Sometimes it's still too much, still too much. Now, notice what Chaplin says occurs when the parent does return. It, it is sometimes abrupt. Daddy comes home. He doesn't understand what's going on. He's been gone for two years, and, and now, he's got a, now he's got a son who's maybe been picked up for joyriding or got, pot, got caught with pot or whatever. The whole family is disrupted. The school can only deal with what they deal with. And there aren't enough school counselors. I have seen situations where you had one school counselor for two schools, totaling 1,200 students. They haven't got a chance. They can't, even make a, they can't even make an indent. They can only deal with what they deal with. So schools need to be aware, hey, before you go, be, you know, Johnny, before you label him, Check into his family, but the, remember, the school counselor is busy. The family can't, he can't call the family and say, could you come in and we can have an interview and you can tell me maybe what's going on here? Because maybe the family doesn't understand it. The children are the carriers, and they're young, and they're impressionable, and they are very vulnerable. Get the tension. You know, the parent's gone. The children, presumably the entire family, in most cases, wants the parent back, misses the parent, yet there's this tension there of what's occurring. Let's, let's roll back into to the kids. And, and notice this. Listen to this at the end. Uh, one of the girls says that uh, Alexis is going to be bigger than Beyonce. And one of the boys, he says, well, she, maybe she already is. Listen, listen for that. We have the last line definitely being some things you can never change. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically like we have some things you can never change. And... Um, it's it happening, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't really make it yeah. change what happens easier. Yeah. It'll, it'll, time really doesn't it? Yeah. You can draw it out a little bit. Yeah. Sound doesn't make it any easier. I like that. I make good points with some magic. I'm just making sounds like, yeah, yeah. No, you're great. Time, time doesn't make it any easier. But it always is. She's gonna be a legend. Oh my she, God. She's really gonna be a legend. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> like she's gonna be a bigger legend than Beyonce. I don't know about that. I don't. Mm. Know. I mean, no. well, actually, maybe. Well, yeah. Mm. Walk yeah, to the class. Just so good. Sorry. Don't cut this. Cut this. Part. And, and now, finally, let's go back to Bruce Chaplin. Notice what happens if and when the parent does return. Uh, there, there is this disruption. Like, so, so, so in some sense, you know, everybody's changed because time has passed. Uh, the, the, the parent who's gone has moved on, in some sense, missed the family, but, you know, new routine without them. Now they got to get back into the groove. The family has gotten into a groove without that parent. Now everybody's kind of got to get back into the groove. Notice what he says. And then the worst part of it is they have not learned to relate to daddy or mommy for say a year. 
And the kid, daddy, mommy come home thinking about, hey, daddy's home. Uh, yeah. And your point is, I haven't needed you for a year. Why all of a sudden do I need you? A lot of disruptive behavior, a lot of issues going on. Plus which when daddy comes home, if he's suffering from some sort of an emotional problem, he's carrying some mental health and some symptoms of PTSD and he comes home. Okay. And so with all of that, uh, here's what I want to do is we do have a book I'm going to put in the show notes. Uh, Hope for the Warrior Family uh, is one of the books that we've written. And so I would encourage you to take advantage of that. If you are a family member who has a service member, uh, that'll really tell you some of what they've dealt with. And it'll give you language uh, if you are a service member and you're wanting to know, what do I say to my family? What do I not say to my family? Maybe flip through that book and then, you know, at some point, uh, put the relevant parts in their hands. Uh, we have also have links to other films that are in the show notes, links to some of our other books. And I want to close out. I'm going to roll out. I'm going to sign off. Uh, from episode number, we are in number 13. I'm going to sign off, but then I want to roll you into the trailer for the documentary Trauma Comes Home. This is all about what happens when trauma affects the warrior family and the fight for the warrior family. We'll end with this. I will see you in episode number 14. I think I was four or five. I remember waking up because I heard the gunshot and then looking out the window and seeing all the police and fire trucks and ambulances. And then that's when it finally hit me that he did that. For the next three years, every time Ron tried to kill himself, I saved, um, I saved a round and I put it in my sock drawer um, because I don't, I don't really know why, but I think I kind of needed to remind myself that I was helping and not hurting him more. So I did that to like, just let myself see, look, he could have been dead this many times over. I had just gotten back from a trip down to North Carolina business trip and just that night I sat in my truck and I I always carry a gun and I put it to my head and I thought of her and I thought of her son. Suicide is more than leaving skeletons in a closet. It's leaving a legacy of great unspeakable pain. And my sisters had put a uh, a sheet up uh, Welcome home, Eddie, <laughs> it said. And uh, something happened. Someone asked me a, an awkward question. Someone said, did you, did you kill anybody while you were there? And that just uh, triggered something in me. So sometimes, um, you know, I think we kind of push him push my brother into trying some of these things that we think, oh my gosh, this would be so good for you to open up and talk about. But what we're doing is slicing open a wound. I mean, for a long time, I couldn't blow dry my hair in the bathroom when he was in there because he would smell burnt hair. But it would trigger something in him, you know? I mean, I don't want to be associated by blow drying my hair to picking up the burnt remains of someone. Training. Uh to go to war, uh, for me, uh, is nowhere near as difficult as preparing to come home and deal with the unknown. Because at the end of the day, it's all about family and faith, nothing else.